The following content is provided by Recovering Your Harvest of Grace Outreach Ministry. Welcome to Harvest of Grace Radio, a program dedicated to uplifting, equipping, and empowering the people of God according to His Word. Stay tuned to be challenged and encouraged by the Word of God. Open your Bible as Reverend Kevin Green teaches us to harvest the grace God has for us. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Family, how are you doing today? This is your brother, your friend, Pastor Kevin Green, and we are Harvest of Grace Outreach and Radio Ministry, and we are on AM 630, The Word. Family, how are you doing? Pray that you had a blessed 4th of July weekend. Pray that it was safe. Pray that you made moments and made lasting memories, because it's all about memories. Uh, we we understand that life is truly but a vapor, and the time that God gives us, <clears throat> we need to do our best to make lasting memories, a lasting impact, and also make sure that we put God first, and also understand to, to to celebrate our family as well. And so we're just thankful for what God is doing. We are just thankful for this study. I mean, God has truly been good to all of us if we can truly testify about it, even though there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the news. One thing that we have a surety in, God is good, God is faithful, and God is a protector of his children. And so fret not for evildoers. We don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But family, I'm just excited. I'm truly happy to be here today on AM 630 The Word and my beautiful wife in her absence, Pastor Brenda Green, and our lovely daughter, Baisha, we greet you in Jesus' joy. We greet you in the name above all names. We greet you in the name of Jesus, the living Christ, for truly it is only he that has given us life, has given us this day, and because of that, we are grateful for what the Lord has done. So, family, tonight what we're doing, we're doing our study And we are walking through the Bible. We're walking through the Bible. Simply just walking through the Bible. And every now and then you get a chapter that you look at and you ask God to give you the grace to be able to teach it in a way that is uh, uh, tasteful and palatable. So Genesis chapter 5 is speaking about the descendants of Adam. And it says, this is written account of the descendants of Adam. When God created human beings, he made them to be like himself. He created them male and female, and he blessed them and called them human. Now, I like that, first of all, simply just to stop there for a second, to understand that he says he made male and female. He made man and woman. Woman means womb man, a man with a womb. So he made man, then he made woman. And then, not only that, but he called them human. Why? Because the color of the skin, pigmentation, the hue. So some people have different tones of ebony hue, lighter shades hue, but we all have hue. So we are human beings. When Adam was 130 years old, he became the father of a son who was just like him in the very image. He named him son Seth. Seth. After the birth of Seth, Adam lived another 800 years. And he had other sons and daughters. Adam lived 930 years, and then he died. When Seth was 105 years old, he became the father of Enosh. After the birth of Enosh, Seth lived another 807 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Seth lived 912, and then he died. When Enosh was 90 years old, he became the father of Kenan. After the birth of Kenan, Enosh lived another 815 years. He had other sons and daughters. Do y'all get where I'm going with this? <clears throat> this is simply an outline of the family. This is per se the first family in the Bible. If you really want to look at it, this is the first earthly family in the Bible. And and we see we have the heads. We have Adam. We have we have Eve. And we had Cain, we had Abel, and now it's going down to talk about his son named Seth. And Seth is where the promise is. You have to understand that Seth is very important because there is a promise in the lineage and there is a promise in Seth. Seth is the reincarnation of Abel. 
Cain killed Abel, but now God gave Adam another child, which was Seth, and Seth is going to be totally different than his brother Cain. He's going to be totally different. There's going to be blessings that come. And we have to understand, family, that dealing with family, and I'm talking about family matters, because if we be honest with ourselves, for those who are listening out there on AM630, The Word, all family does not get along. Uh, some family members, they make you proud. They make you smile. And some family members make you shake your head. And some family members, you don't even want to claim them. I'm just telling the truth. But they're family, and blood is thicker than any substance. So because of that, we have to understand that God is allowing us through Moses as he's the writer of the book of Genesis. He is expounding and expressing to us the genealogy breakdown of all these people. Seth, there's a promise in Seth. Enosh, watch this, Kenan, and then Mahalia, and all these people lived, Jared, and then there's a man by the name of Enoch. Now, I'm going to stop right there because we understand about Enoch. Uh, I know a lot of you understand that, that Enoch used to walk with God every day, and one day while him and God were walking, God said, you know what, Enoch, looks like you're closer to my house than your house. Why don't you come on home with me? And, and he transitioned right then and that moment, and he did not see death. He walked into eternal glory with God. But you have to understand, in all these uh, genes of family, there are some that are good. <clears throat> there are some that are not good. And watch this. There are some who actually did nothing. They were just there. So you have to understand that everybody in family, and why does family matter? Let's talk about this first of all. Family matters because when you're down and when you're out, family is the glue that can keep the family together. Family is the glue that, that can keep everything together. God made the glue, but when family sticks together, it makes it better. And a lot of things we're seeing right now, family is simply not sticking together. Why? Because family is torn apart because of money, because of mental delusional problems. They're torn away because jealousy. There's always somebody in some family that think everybody is jealous of them. Uh, they're jealous of my anointing. They're jealous of my gift. But it's not the fact about jealousy. Some people just don't understand. And you think people are jealous, but really they're not. But also you, you have people in families who just are different. They're, they're just simply different. They're black and white, night and day, cold and hot. But still, in the midst of all that, blood keeps us together. Just like our Christian family. We are kindred by the blood of God that is in us and by the Hagias Numa, which is a Latin word that means pure Holy Spirit. We have the spirit because the Bible says he breathed his ruach, his breath or his pneuma in the Greek, his breath within our nostrils, and we became a living soul, a living being. And because of that, family matters because we are now heirs of God. And we have some people in our family that make us proud. But we got some people, listen, let, can, can I just give an example? And, and, and forgive me if I need forgiven. Jim Jones was a Christian man back in the 70s. But everybody that he led, led he led them to death because it was a cult-like uh, revolutionary thing. But, but he said he was a Christian. Now, I'm saying this because you have some people that go down one path, but then you have others that go down another path. But guess what? The blood of Christ connects us all, just like in our regular families. We have some people that every time you see them, you just want to smile. But then sometimes you see people, you just want to shake your head and say, what is really going on? But family, family matters. Why does family matter? The first reason why family matters is because the first thing God instituted was family. God instituted family before money, before ministry, before all these other things, God instituted family. Why is family important? Because the Bible says if two can walk together, watch this, and agree in harmony. So when two are together, and, and the number two is very 
ironic that two means division, but when you add another two, it means togetherness. So when you when you can come together with your mate, when you can come together with your brother, with your sister, with your family members, God has established for family to be together. And what do you mean by that? Because family, marriage is family. Because family, when you're married, you're family. And, and when you have families that are married and intertwined together, uh, they, they, they are now blended families because now you have one person and you have another person, but they're together. Just like in Genesis chapter 5, all these descendants were blended together. Some stuck out more than others, but all of them were very important in the eyesight of God. If they were not important, their name would not be mentioned in this book we call the Bible. Just like us, our names is mentioned in the book of life because we are family. We are on the family tree. And what makes us heirs and the reason why family matters, family matters because God has justified the family. God has ordained for family to come together. And when I'm talking about family, I'm talking about blood, but then I'm talking about people who are not your blood, but they just may be considered blood because you're just that close. Everybody has somebody that is closer to you than your own family member. So it's just not blood that makes you family. What makes you family is when you share the same culture, the same identity, the same goals in life. That is what makes you family. And so in this Genesis chapter 5, family matters. And listen, family matters because God ordained for family through marriage. He ordained for family. Watch this. Family is, is honorable in the sight of God, like marriage. It's honorable in the sight of God. Why and how can I say that? Because what was one of the first commandments that God told the people to do? He said, be fruitful and multiply. That means make family, make descendants. Now, can I tell you something? You're going to have people in your family who may be addicted to substances. You're going to have some in your family who are chasing money and trying to chase fast money, pyramid schemes, whatever it might be. And you're going to have some people in your family who are just sold out for God. And can I tell you something? The ones who are sold out for God, and I can testify to this because when I was a young believer, it looked to me like they were not having no fun. They were just fuddy-duddy, just, just sticks in the mud. It wasn't no fun to be a Christian. They, they make it look so boring. But now that I've reached a certain age in my life and I can look back and see the people who thought they were having fun, some of them are incarcerated, some of them are deceased, some of them have ailments because they party too hard, they were doing all this stuff, but it seems like the ones who stayed Christian stayed believers, it seems like God advanced them and he expanded their territory. Does somebody hear me today on AM 630, the word? If you hear me, I want you to say amen in your car or type amen on Facebook because we understand that because of family and it matters and it matters to God because God ordained it. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And when you look in Genesis chapter five, and when you look at the, at the family lineage of Adam, do you know how God blessed Adam to see all his lineage, all his grandchildren? God blessed him to see that. That's a blessing. Why? Because you have to understand, family, and check this out. When you trust God, no matter when you fall, not if you fall, but when you fall, God's grace will always pick you back up because God's not concerned about your fall. He's concerned about your getting up. And a lot of people in the world, they are concerned about you falling. They want you to stay down like a boxer. They want you to stay down. But God gave us the uh, weeble wobble. You, you know what? Weeble wobble, but they don't fall down. That was the saying. You used to hit them and they bounce back up with a smile on their face. That's how we have to be. We have to be knocked down, but we have to come back up with a smile on our face. Why? Because we have a joy within us that the world did not give, nor can the world take away. And so we talked about Enoch. Enoch walked with God. God told Enoch, you know what? Since you're closer to my house than your house, why don't you just come over to my place? And he walked into God. And he walked into the house of God. Then you have the oldest man in the Bible, Methuselah, who lived to be, what, nine, 900 and, let me see. He lived a very, 969 years. Then... This is where 
when we get to Genesis chapter 6, 7, and 8, you're going to see a switch in the family. Because if you think that what happened in Genesis chapter 3 was something, think about and listen, let me share this with you. We have curses in our family trees. We have curses. My God, have mercy. Help me today, Lord. We have certain uh, strongholds that have strangled your great, 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 great grandparents and still have a trace of strangling you right now over 100 or 200 years after they're passing on. Why? Because when you think about it, what did Adam symbolize? Adam symbolized the first man. He symbolized the first man to be disobedient to God. Why? Because he did not follow, even though he did not partake at first, but because he was responsible for the teaching and the covering of his family, God held him more responsible than Eve. And because of that, he was there, but he did not say anything. So God held him responsible. And so this is the first sin. And so because it's the first sin, now you got to understand there is a seed planted in that bloodline. There is a seed planted for sin in that bloodline. What is sin? Sin is anything that is unpleasing to God. Sin is anything that separates you from the place of God. Sin is anything that can keep you outside of the will of God. That is sin. And so in the bloodline, starting with the head, which is Adam and Eve, we see that sin was cultivated. There was a sin culture that was made to come into existence because the, the, the serpent he beguiled them. He tricked them. And how many people have fallen short because they have been tricked by flashy words, big, pretty words, somebody dressed in a nice suit or a nice tight dress or have a nice haircut or a nice car. We have been tricked because of that, because we're looking at the outside, but we don't trust what God has told us. When God has told you something and watch this. I'm saying that their sin was in their bloodline. And you know who else is in their bloodline? We are in their bloodline because we are the heirs. And sin, watch this, has been transferred from generation to generation. There are certain habits that we do that we can't understand, we can't even express. Why do some people drink? Because this was passed down. This seed was planted back over maybe 30, 60, or 100 years ago from somebody you never met. But because that seed is in there, now you got to fight against that seed. So think about all these people in the bloodline, the descendants of Adam. Think about what they had to fight through. And when we get to Lamech, I'm telling you, Lamech takes the cake. I'm not going to give you a sneak peek, but when you look at what he did, it'll really make you shake your head to understand that you have some people that are in your family tree that you really wish you could cut the branch off because you don't even want to be associated with them. And then we get to a man named Noah. Noah, yeah. Noah had an ark. Noah had a, uh, a vision. God spoke to him. And told him it was going to rain when they had never experienced, felt, or seen rain. But God told him to get ready. So you have people who, who failed God, who fell short in, in, in the bloodline. But then you have people who trusted God. Who, who who connected to God. And am I helping somebody today who's listening to AM 630, the word, this is your brother, your friend, Pastor Kevin Green, this is Harvest of Grace Radio. Am I helping somebody understand that family matters and it's all in the blood, it's all in the family because we are now, our blood has been purified. And the reason why our blood has been purified is because on Calvary's cross, the blood of Jesus had the antidote for any disease, any malady, which is problem, anything, the blood of Jesus was the antidote. So if you're going through a problem, the blood of Jesus is the antidote. The story was told about two poets that they were, they, they had went to the scene of Calvary's cross and they were trying to write down some words that that could pin how powerful the blood was. And, and as they came around the corner, there was 
a leopard, a, a leopard that was there that was waiting to pounce on them. But the blood was flowing down that hill and the leopard licked the blood and he changed. His persona changed. Instead of being aggressive, he became weak. So listen, it says, it says what, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me holy? It says, oh, precious is thy flow. That makes me white as snow because the blood of Christ, it is a sanctifier. It is a purifier and it is power that we have. If no matter what's going on in your genealogy with your family, if the blood of Christ, just a drop of the blood of Christ is in that family, I'm telling you, it will purify all the impurities. Now, let me say this. Sometimes it takes longer than others, but the Bible lets us know all things are possible if you only believe. And so when you believe God and trust and take God at his word for what he said, what did he say? He said that he would never leave nor forsake us. He said that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So he's letting us know we're going to have troubles we're going to have trials, tests, and tribulations. But in the midst of that, we have the antidote for any disease, sin, sin, anything that separates you from God. If you have a problem that is separating you from God, you may count, call it alcoholism. You may call it lying. You may call it pornography. You may call it whatever, but it's sin. And so when a drop of the blood of Christ, my God, touches that, it can purify it and it can eradicate. Eradicate means to destroy without leaving a trace. It can take it all away. And when that happens, now we are purified. And that's what happened um, in the story when we go to chapter six. We're in chapter five now of Genesis talking about the descendants that Noah represents a, a, a prototype of Christ. A pre-Christ. Why? Because God used him to purify the world. He purified the world. God told him to do what? He told him to take his take his wife, his children and their wives, and animals that were pure, of two un, a clean, two to a pair, male and female, get them on the boat, which, which, which was the length of four football fields which was made with cypress wood, which was special. God told them to get on there. Why? Because God is going to purify. And the number was eight. And eight symbolizes new beginning. And, and, and eight also symbolizes a covenant. Because on the eighth day, the children of Israel, they were circumcised. So God is saying, uh, even though some of your family, they dropped the ball a little bit, they fumbled the ball, they ran backwards, but guess what? You're going to be the one in your family that's going to pick the ball up and you're going to run the right way. Kind of like the story of Wrong Way Jones from uh, Notre Dame. It was back in the, in the 1930s. He got the ball. He ran 99 yards for a touchdown the wrong way for the other team. When they went into the locker room, the coach slapped him on the head on his helmet and said, Jones, next time you get the ball, run the right way. So now that we have the ball, let us run the right way for Christ. Let us learn how to bury uh, all the sin, all of the problems that had destroyed our uh, uh predecessors. And so as we get ready to grow and leave a legacy with our families, let us do our best to, to let the blood of Jesus in increments purify what is within us. Because when you look at what happened, why did God destroy the world? God destroyed the world because he said it's wicked. So that means that there was an impurity and there was a poison. And why did this happen? Because sin came in. But just by one man, sin came in. By another man, sin was taken out of the world. His name is Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus, 
Today is a great day to get to know him. Look in the Bible. Look in any other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and learn about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he is the purifier. He is the sanctifier. And he is the only person that can make you white as snow. He is the only person that can take a troubled heart and give it peace. He is the only person that can put your mind at rest so that you can sleep and start Stop having anxiety and sleep attack. God is able to do that. So, family, we pray that this word bless you. This is your brother, your friend, Pastor Kevin Green. This is Harvest of Grace Outreach and Radio Ministry, and we are on AM 630 The Word, and we want to tell you, family, family matters. It doesn't matter what's in the blood because the blood of Jesus can purify whatever may be tainted, whatever might be evil or crooked, the blood of Jesus can make it straight. God bless you is our prayer. Thank you for tuning in. Reverend Kevin Green and Minister Brenda White Green are passionate ministers of the Word of God and seek to challenge the body of Christ to receive all that God has in store. Thank you for listening to Harvest of Grace Radio. It's our desire that you connect with a Bible-believing church that would encourage you to believe all the promises of God for your life. For more information on Harvest of Grace Radio, please visit the program guide at am630theword.com. I Am Refocus Radio is brought to you by FOO 4 Star and Holy Crab. FOO 4 Star is a family-owned Asian restaurant in San Antonio, Texas. We have been a local favorite for Asian cuisine for over 10 years. With nothing but full smiles and fast service, you'll be leaving satisfied. Come on in for some authentic Vietnamese food. Holy Crab is one of a kind Cajun Creole style seafood restaurant located in Universal City, Texas. We offer traditional seafood items as well as chicken and steak. We also offer seafood boils. Come give us a try. You won't be disappointed. You can find these two eateries in Universal City, Texas at 2921 Pat Booker Road.